Hello everybody out there and welcome back here with the future once again to another showcase and review and yeah once again another wrestling figure showcase and review. I've been doing a lot of wrestling figure showcases and reviews because lately I picked up quite a few new wrestling figures to add to my collection and I wanted to do all the showcase and reviews on them before I moved on to something else because um, I've just been really into uh, picking up these older figures that I never had you know back whenever I was collecting them when I was younger. Uh, me and my brother have a huge Jack specific WWF action, bone crunching action figure collection and uh, the six inch style. Um, not all of them contain the bone crunching parts, but they all fit into that six inch bone cruncher line um, until they came out with the Titan Tron live figures. Um, so I've always been a huge fan of the WWF Jack specific bone crunching six inch line and the WWF Hasbro line um, before that. Um, but those are my two favorite um, eras of wrestling figures. So yeah, I've been going back and picking up a lot of the WWF Jack specific um, six inch or bone crunchers um, from back whenever um, I was collecting that I never did have. Um, I never had this figure either today. And it came in a lot with three WCW figures that I will be showing off in future reviews. Um, but this came along with it and it is one of the 1997 Series 1 WWF Slammers figures. Um, that is in the same series as the Farouk and Steve Austin that I've already, Steve Austin, excuse me, that I've already showcased and reviewed. Um, so I figured, um, we'd do a review here on the Series 1 Slammers Undertaker, um, WWF Jack Specific action figure. Um, yeah, these had the actions to them and stuff, and they did fit in with the Bone Cruncher 6-inch line, and there was actually a Bone Cruncher that was made in the exact same mold as this, um, for the... Um, WWF Championship box set collection that they made. The first one where they had the um, World Tag, Intercontinental, and the European Championship in there, um, which was really neat. Taker came with the World Championship in that package, and it was the exact same figure as this without the Slammers action. Um, but this is in his period where um, he stopped wearing the purple um, gloves and everything, and he switched over. He came in Survivor Series. Um, he came down, you know, with like, kind of like Batman style with Batman like wings on. Um, it was real cool entrance that he came down from the ceiling and returned and he was in all black. Um, so yeah, after that, you know, he became a darker sided undertaker wearing all black, which kind of morphed into his, um, what would eventually be ministry of darkness undertaker, um, right before like you know going into the cane feud and all that so this was a good transition period figure that they made um after he um stopped wearing the purple and black which was the only other figure we had that me and my brother had um before they made this they had the purple and black was the first undertaker figure they made that they made so yeah um i want to thank everybody who subscribed lately dropped the comment left the, any kind of feedback um, it's all appreciated, and all the support is much appreciated here on my channel. And I hope everybody likes to look at this latest um, WWF 1997 Slammers action figure from Jack Specific that I picked up. It's the Phenom, guys, The Undertaker. Let's check it out. Okay, so here we have three of the WWF Slammers Series 1 action figures. The latest one that I picked up, The Undertaker, um, and the ones that I've showed off already, the Farouk, a.k.a. Ron Simmons, and the mint on card Steve Austin that I've had here for years now, um, since like 2010, I think I've had this that I picked up on eBay. But it's mint on card, and I've never wanted to open it up because I don't have any other mint on card um, examples of WWF Jacks figures other than this one in my collection. So um, I did have a Shotgun Saturday Night one that I opened up, and it's right there. Um, I have the Paul White there that I did a showcase and review on. I'll put it up in the suggested box to the right. Go and check the 99, SummerSlam 99, Paul White, uh, Superstar Series 9. And these are also from Superstar Series 9, the Edge and Christian. There's a Titantron Live, I mean a Christian and Gangrel. And there's a Titantron Live Edge back there to the left. But yeah, I did this Christian and Gangrel review too. Put that up in the box to the right as well. Um, then you have, you know, Titantron Vince that came with the actual first Titantron playset, um, Titantron Live playset, and then the Titantron Live Billy Gunn and Road Dog Jesse James there, um, Bone Cruncher. So, yeah, um, Jack Specifics lined up in the back so everybody knows what those are. And then there's the Ripped and Ruthless Taker, um, and he's in that same kind of, um, outfit from 97 that he was wearing. Sometimes he wore the gloves, but... 
I looked online uh, before I did this review. He had some elbow pads on in the match I was watching from 97. So yeah, this was basically, um, he didn't have the gloves on either in the match I was watching. So this looks like more of a, you know, representation later on. I think he added the gloves back, um, the fingerless gloves. But nonetheless, they're from the same era. So I had to throw this in here um, because this is Jack Pacific 2, ripped and ruthless. Um, very cool figure. Um, these were designed really well for the day detail was very cool um but yeah he had you know um the cross stitch like here on the sides uh across the front there too so that was pretty cool on his attire but like i said they gave him the fingerless um, black gloves here the all black boots that he was wearing at the time which was a big change up from you know he used to have a certain color from gray then to purple um, but this time he just went to all black. So I thought this era was kind of cool, though. I liked the all black taker there um, initially. Um, the Ripped and Ruthless guys are really hard to get to stand up, by the way. Um, so I'm hoping he stays up there, but whatever. But this is the Bone cr um not Bone Cruncher, but the WWF Jack Pacific Slammer Series 1 Undertaker that I picked up. Um, he's in the 6-inch Bone Cruncher line. That's why I wanted to say that at first. But he does not have the bone crunching action, even though he has um, bone cruncher arms. You can see they're rubber, um, and they have the holes in the side and everything. But when you try to um, see if it has the device, there's nothing in there. They're just the rubber um, bone cruncher arms that they use for the figure. And even the other arm is, you know, the rubber bone crunching arm as well, but no action. So he fits in the six inch line, but he's not. Um, a bone cruncher. He's a slammer. The legs are solid plastic on this one, of course, because of the action. I'm not really sure why this leg's solid. Um, I'm guessing that this is going to be how the Stone Cold would be, too, if you were to open it up. Uh, but you can see he has this button on the back that you push for his action there, um, which was different than other bone crunchers, like a regular standard uh, bone crunching action figure, you know, just had, you know, the standard back. Um, this Shotgun Saturday Night one didn't have any device um, either. Um, but a lot of them came with the bone crunching action, um, which I can show off here on Gang Rail from the Series 9 Superstars line. Yeah, you can hear it there. That was the, uh, bone crunching action. You can hear there, just snapping. So a little demonstration on that. Um, but yeah, they didn't give the slammers, um, this slammer anyway, um, uh, because Farouk actually, has the bone crunching legs, I think, from his original figure, which you can hear there. And this is from the same Slammers line. So it was really weird how Jax would do things. Like, they'd use bone crunching parts with the device in a line, and then some wouldn't have it. So, um, still, uh, the packaging would say bone crunching action, because all the Slammers had the same packaging. And you can see even on the back here. Um, there's the Undertaker with that, uh, shin splinter kicking action that Stone Cold also has here as well. Here's the Stone Cold. And like I said, probably both of his legs are solid plastic, just like the Taker. And he probably has the rubber bone cruncher arms because this is the exact, other than the all black boots, it looks pretty much like the first Stone Cold that they released, especially that head sculpt that they used forever. I mean, you can see that head sculpt basically is the same head sculpt that they used on this later Shotgun Saturday Night one. So yeah, they were using this shotgun, they were using this uh, head sculpt for quite a while for Stone Cold. Um, jacks were, you know, masters at reusing parts. And then you had the Farouk here that came in the line. See, he's a little damaged, I've already showed him off. He had the trigger on the back where his arms, would, there's just enough trigger left here on the back to be able to demonstrate it a little bit, but his arms would go up and down like that. Um, so that was pretty much it on him. Basically looked like his first action figure, but with the arms were different. Um, always liked Farouk Ron Simmons. So there's the second one from the line. And then back to the um, Undertaker here. Um, his action was exactly the same as the one that Stone Cold had. They both had the shin splinter kicking action. And you can see the button on the back there. And when you pushed it, his leg would, well, let's get a better view of this, but his leg would kick forward. And this one still works really good. 
Um, so let's see if we can uh, stand up somebody here. Stone Cold. And let's shin, shin kick him. Or what was it called? The shin splinter kicking action. Let's go. Yep. Works pretty good. Um, but yeah, that's the action there that they give to him. And I like that. Wasn't huge on the uh, slammers, but um, the second wave of slammers, you had the first um, Brian Pillman and Kane figures ever released, and also the only figures released of Taka Michinoku and the Patriot in that wave. So the second slammer series was better than series one, but still series one is classic because it was the first one. And the likeness on Taker there, I kind of like the eyes all bucking out there. Um, but the jet black hair... Um, kind of the tathers on the um, shoulders there from the shirt. And like I said, the stitching on the front. You really got to get it, you know, shining in some light to see all the detail. Um, but they did a great job on the mold for this figure. Like I said, it was the same figure that was used in like the Superstars um, Championship box set um, as well. Uh, but you can see the stitching on the side of the pants as well down to the boots. And the solid black boots like he was wearing from the video that I watched earlier today. Um, just to see the attire. Um, but you can see screws in the back of these solid plastic legs. And the solid plastic Adam and there's screws in there. So, um, Yeah, you gotta love it. I like the device on the back here. So, yeah. Um, take a look at this back card back here because it does show off the others from the line. They had uh, Gold Dust. Brett the Hitman Heart and Mankind that I definitely am trying to get a hold of now to complete this uh, set because I have uh, three out of the six, so the other three would be nice to have. Of course, you have the stomp figures that I've shown off in past videos there and the old signature series. If anybody likes the major wrestling figure podcast, they know about Stomp in Paradise. And then the signature series, which was cool. Um, came out with the Austin there. I think that was the first Austin 316 shirt. Uh, with jeans which was cool because for a long time you know he was just running out injured you know cutting promos and stunning guys in his jeans and his shirt so it was really nice to have a stone cold not only in his tights but in his street clothes you just didn't see that before but um you can see the bone crunching action um showing you how to do it and then your raw is war monstering there um which was the refurbished ljn ring before they came out um, with the King of the Ring ring, which was down there, um, that actually fit the figures. This one was way bigger, meant for LJN figures um, at an 8-inch scale. Um, but you can see the back of this card back. There's a look at the um, Ripped and Ruthless line, which I do have the Austin on card. I don't have the Gold Dust or the Mankind, but I do have the Undertaker one right here. And, uh, yeah, you can see, you know, the attire is... Very much like the Slammers figure, except, you know, updated, and they gave him these gloves, and you can see his tats more. They don't have the tats at all on the Slammers taker, um, but they actually went through to give tattoo detail on the Ripton Ruthless taker, so I thought that was a cool touch. Um, very big figures, though, compared to the, you know, six-inch line. You know, Paul White's a bigger six-inch fig, and he towers over Paul White even, so... Not really in scale to the um, Bone Crunchers, but it came out at the same time. And yeah, I really like this figure. Um, so yeah, guys, I hope everybody liked checking out um, the pickup that I made, the showcase and review over the 1997 WWF Jack Pacific WWF Slammers Series 1 Undertaker action figure here. Very sweet. I really like them. So, yeah, very happy to get them. Hope everybody liked checking this out. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Drop a comment down below. Uh, give me a like if you like what you saw. If this is your first time viewing, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell for more videos. And, yeah, guys, until next time, I hope everybody enjoyed checking this out. And keep collecting, as always. Peace out.